This is Brian Putt. Today I'm going to talk to you again about valued information. This is a really important subject and it's very difficult to understand. So this particular presentation is designed for those that are trying to understand the basics of valued information and how you can put them into a model. What we're going to do is we're going to talk through the results first and then in the second half we will actually go through the model and spend some time there. So if you just want to see the results, just watch the first part. If you want to see the whole thing, watch the whole video. So let's get started. I have a problem frame here where we're wearing some good clothes, but do not have an umbrella. And there's a 30% chance of rain today. So we could delay our departure and catch some additional information that will indicate whether it will rain. Go we'll talk to a, a weather forecaster or something, and we get some information. The problem is that this information is only 80% accurate. We'll talk about that in the model. Should, so the question is, should we stay for that information and buy the information? There's a cost to that. Uh, we can buy an umbrella on the way out. And uh, should we buy the umbrella if we don't get the information? The, the downside is if it rains and we do not have an umbrella, then we have to have our clothes cleaned and possibly repaired and replaced, which can be expensive. So this is the strategy table. And it's really critical to framing a problem. You need to understand what you're trying to do here. So uh, over here is the basic strategy table, buy information or take an umbrella. Those are the decisions I need to make and or possible decisions. So the alternatives of buying information are yes to no, take an umbrella is yes or no. So here's the strategies we're going to evaluate. We don't take an umbrella, we don't get information, and we don't take the umbrella. We can don't get information and we take the umbrella or we buy information and then what we do will depend upon the outcome of that information we get. Obviously, if, they, if the person says it's going to rain, we're going to take an umbrella or buy an umbrella. And if it doesn't, says it doesn't going to rain, we're not going to do that. So here are the results. Remember, we're going to do a go through the model later on. So there are three alternatives. And the alternative with information is shown as the black line here. And I'm going to be consistent with these colors throughout. And it has a value, a cost, if you will, of 10.6. With no information, with the umbrella is red. So here it is. So if I get the buy the umbrella, that's basically the cost of the umbrella only. There's no other cost. I can't, there's no cost for cleaning my clothes because I have the umbrella. It doesn't matter whether it rains or not. And if I don't get the umbrella, don't buy the umbrella, there's a 70% chance it doesn't rain, so I didn't incur any cost. But when it does rain, I have a big cost here, which is really cleaning my clothes. So what we can see here, the value with information has a lower cost than either one of these and a 30% probability of rain. With SIP math, we can also talk about the, the, the distribution of the value of information. And that's shown over here. The value, the value of information with no umbrella is shown in the blue. Here's the blue. So when it rains, we save a lot. Because if we don't have the umbrella uh, in, the, in the reference case, you have to clean your clothes. On the other hand, if the reference case is with the umbrella, there's a cost down here because they're perfectly safe under all situations, but because there's an 80% probability, only 80% probability of, uh, of being correct with the information, there is some downside. So we think it's not going to rain, and it does, and we have to have our clothes clean. So these differences here correspond to the differences over here in the alternatives. Here's a new graph that I find really interesting. Now, we've said in the previous slide that it was a 30% chance of rain. What if that's the wrong answer? That's the reality. What if it's something different? And so that's what this graphic's all about. Total cost to buy information. If there's a zero probability of rain, 
I'm going to incur the cost of gathering the information. I didn't really need it. And then over here, I bought the information. Oh, this is only goes to 50%. Okay, we're going to talk about this, this over here uh, in the model side. And then let's look at the um, this red line, total costs. Uh, if we uh, do not buy the information, but do buy the umbrella. So that's just the cost of the umbrella. It doesn't matter what the probability of rain is here. On the blue line, total costs, if we don't get the information and no umbrella, it's a zero cost because they didn't incur any uh, costs at all. And you can see in the middle here, there's different decision policies when we're trying to minimize our cost. So our, our efficient frontier here, if you will, comes down through here and we through this point, through around, call it 18%, we would not buy information and not take our umbrella. Then from here to here, from that 18%, let's call that, uh, what, 37% we would buy information, but if it was over 37%, then we would just uh, buy an umbrella and be safe all the time. So you can see there's three decision policies. So with that, let's go over to the model. Here's the model. We're gonna divide the model into different segments. The first segment should be what decisions we need to make. Now, in reality, we don't need to make any decisions in this model because we're in this model, we're going to calculate all three alternatives. No information, no umbrella, no information with the umbrella and buying information. But I have shown here the decision policy based on the outcome of the information that we receive. We have various uncertainties. So does it rain? 30% chance. And so we've simply done a comparison to the uniform distribution, which is identified over here using the Hubbard research equation. The umbrella cost shown here as a triangular distribution, and we've calculated that over here. Don't get it concerned about the, the length of these equations. SIPMath is going to program those for you using the tool. That's what makes it valuable. Here's the cost of cleaning your clothes and the cost of gaining the information. We then have the imperfect information matrix. So what we're saying here is there's an 80% chance of the uh, forecaster being right. So if it's actually going to rain, there's an 80% chance that they'll say it is going to rain. And if it's not going to rain, there's an 80% chance they'll say it is not going to rain. So based on the outcome of the reality, we can then pick which of these distributions we're going to use. And then based on this random value, we can determine the outcome of the imperfect information. Over here, we have shown the distributions of the cost uncertainties. You can see that the cost of cleaning the, uh, our clothes is the most dominant. So here's the deterministic model segment. Up above, we were talking about decisions and uncertainties. Now we're into the deterministic model. This is relatively simple, to be very honest. Real models, it's going to be much more elaborate. We have the question of, do we buy information? This is for, uh, we're buying information. We want to calculate that value. And the information cost we're going to incur all the time. We only incur the umbrella cost when the forecast is for rain. And that was determined up here in this cell here. If it rained, we're going to get the umbrella. And then the cleaning cost occurs when it rains, but we did not buy the umbrella. So we get a total cost. Um, there's a total cost of no information and no umbrella. If it rains, we incur the suit cost or the cost of cleaning our clothes. And if we buy the umbrella, we simply incur the co umbrella cost. 
This graph here shows the three distributions. We saw that earlier with these expected values. Now the value of information be, can be calculated directly here. Typically what you would do is take the value with information and subtract your reference case, that, that value of no information, the best case possible. In this case it's cost, so we're really the reverse of that. We'd like to show a positive value, so what I've done here is actually take the no information case, no information for the umbrella, and subtracted the value with information. In this case, a positive value is a benefit. A negative value, as shown in this particular trial, is a cost to getting the information. So down here, we show the distribution of that value of information. The expected value of the information if we had purchased the umbrella all the time, is 1.1, shown as a red line. I'm going to be consistent with these colors now. And if we did not buy the umbrella, it's going to be um, a positive 2.8. So if we don't buy the umbrella, when it rains, because we had the information, we save a lot of money. On the other hand, if they bought the if they bought the umbrella with the no information. Sometimes you think it will not rain, and it does, and therefore we incur the cost of cleaning our clothes, whereas we didn't do that if we bought the umbrella all the time. So this is helpful in describing to your decision makers what is actually happening. Now there is a question here of well, how accurate is that original 30% chance of rain? So what is the decision policy as we change the probability of rain? Now, you could do this with multiple experiments, but what I've done here is not use multiple experiments, so you can do this with the free version. So we had our table here of res probabilistic results. We had the cost of umbrella, uh, and down here we had the cost of, uh, if we buy information, no umbrella, with umbrella, and then the VOIs. So what I can do is I can change this probability of rain and start making a table over here. So just for kicks, we will split our screen here. Let's change this to 50%. And because SIP math is repeatable, I can put in that 50% and these results are identical to what you're seeing over here in this column. And when I did that, these curves also changed. You'll notice that these EVs have changed as well. So SIP math automatically updates as you change the inputs. That can be very valuable in testing your model to make sure it's right. So let's look at this, this graphic here again. And so what we're saying is, if we look at the extremes, if there's no chance of rain, no chance of rain, the best alternative is to not buy the information and not take an umbrella. That's it. That doesn't cost us anything. And because there was no rain, we don't have to clean our clothes. That is clearly the best. On the other hand, if there's a 100% chance of rain, oh, we didn't get there, did we? If there's 100% chance of rain, you can see these lines are going to extend out. The best policy is to not buy information and buy the umbrella. It's in this middle area here that there's a change in decision policy. We're sitting right here at 30%. And so the delta between the black line and the red line corresponds to this red line or in this case, a negative 2.2. It's actually, oh, see, we're at 50%, aren't we? 50%, way up here, 50%. So what we're seeing is that the always buying the umbrella is better. And that's because this is a negative 2.2. And then at 50%, relative to not taking the umbrella, we are better off by 
8.7. There's that 8.7, the distance between here and here. So that's the model. If you'd like to get more information on SIPMAP, please visit probabilitymanagement.org. And there you can download the SIPMAP toolbar. There's a free version and an enterprise version. What I'm going to show you in the model today is only needs the free version, so you could duplicate this. And I'd be happy to uh, send you the model as well if you'd like. You might read the flaw of averages by Sam Savage, and there's actually going to be a new version coming out here pretty soon. And then I have many videos on my YouTube channel uh, that cover use of the tools, cost of schedule risk analysis, portfolio, value information, and then there's some mind problems here if you'd like to play a little mind games. And it uses SIPMAP to solve them. So I uh, hope you found this valuable.